Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Olmos and I want to welcome you to the TMJ and Sleep Therapy Center. This is a project that uh, I put together over the years and I'm very proud of the fact that uh, these centers which are uh, limited to the treatment of chronic pain and sleep breathing disorders for all ages, children to elderly. And we're, we now have over 60 centers uh, of doctors that I've mentored over the years uh, dispersed across seven countries. I'd like to give you a tour of what we do here uh, in, in our office in San Diego, which is the birthplace for this uh, standardized care. Okay. We're demonstrating a technique um, called joint vibration analysis, and this allows us to um, objectively measure the pathology of the jaw. So whether we have soft tissue displacement or whether we have osseous um, uh, perforations uh, gives us a quick and easy way to understand how we began treatment. Okay, so we're going to follow her on the screen. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. Perfect, great job. Okay, now go ahead and and so from this we can record vibrations and now calibrate them to see how much of this energy is um, above and below uh, this range and so then it'll come out um, as a displacement with no tissue movement proper displacement or perforations based on vibrations either be under 300 hertz or above 300 hertz Yeah. Comb beam CT um, is a very uh, important part of our evaluation process as um, we're able to gather data about the entirety of the patient, um, including looking for uh, breathing issues, um, looking for structural problems, and um, uh, being able to see obstructions and, and uh, gross pathologies. Uh, uh, we get all sorts of information from this type of technology. Very important to be able to discern and walk through the patient to be able to see where the uh, uh, problems in breathing are um, and uh, so that we can make proper referrals. Uh, also, um, the degree of the pathology that is necessary to be able to help these people because in certain cases like this young patient with um, severe osteoarthritis uh, that was recommended that uh, she have her uh, jaws cut out and have artificial condyles and, we were, and uh, with uh, limited opening we were able to help her within days to achieve normal opening and um, uh, now in healing and uh, doesn't need the surgery. So some pretty amazing cases um, that uh, we're able to demonstrate using this technology. Every patient we evaluate their posture um, looking at it in uh, against a grid with a plumb line so we can discern we split the hips so we can see scoliosis um, in the frontal um, and uh, sagittal as well as posterior. So can you turn to your there you go your left thank you Take a couple steps forward and we can align as such um, and then of course uh, away so you can turn one more time please perfect thank you and then a little bit to your right excellent and and so this is uh, simply adjusted for this purpose there and you're always splitting the hips in order to discern um, the improvement so we do these evaluations both before uh, we treat and after to uh, demonstrate the uh, improvements in uh, body posture. In trying to explain people's problems, um, props become very important for them to visualize. Uh, so different types of anatomy, uh, orthopedic dysfunction of the jaw, uh, muscular entrapments, nerves, uh, breathing dissonance, all of these things are very important for them to be able to understand and uh, especially with the sinuses and uh, these kinds of problems. So when it comes time to produce appliances um, for either pain or breathing disorders or both, um, they can now be fitted with these printed 
type 12 nylon devices so these are much more accurate than previously um, been able to produce um, from the years uh, doing acrylic these are so much more thin light and durable um, that that now these uh, for people that didn't have the ability or just couldn't tolerate appliances previously so we have different variations of them they manage the tongue the jaw and the nose these are all fitted pieces and even for those most difficult cases where you need positive pressure and oral appliance and a quick disconnect um, these all can be um, produced uh, using the new printed technology so using sophisticated uh, lasers, cold lasers, therapeutic lasers, we're able to um, uh, uh, effectively treat many areas. This one here called the Charlie Head's got three different laser systems, um, being able to do deep structures of the neck, which are very common in jaw problems, with the wand being able to do any of, of the other areas of the head and neck. Um, in sweeping motions. These are very sophisticated lasers. They are combination. They have 808, 905 wavelength, both uh, uh, continuous and pulsed that are synchronized. So very sophisticated laser systems that accelerate healing and uh, reduce pain dramatically. Ultrasound is a very important uh, treatment modality, um, heating up the tissue 50 degrees and the vibrations uh, break up the adhesions. We can also penetrate medicines in using this technique called phonophoresis. We use this for both shoulders and facial muscles. Sometimes injection techniques are necessary for either proliferative reasons or for muscle relaxation trigger point. So um, that way we have a full um, gamut of different therapies that are necessary to help people um, relieve their pain. Okay, go ahead and open and make a tight lip seal around that and plug your nose with your left hand. Now you're going to take a deep breath in when I tell you to and then normal breaths after that. Ready? Go ahead. So this is a pharyngometer and its purpose is to measure airway volume uh, in the oral pharyngeal. Um, so this is the baseline, this is a person's regular breathing and for people with uh, sleep breathing disorders there is a collapse of that pharyngeal airway. So now we're going to measure her collapse. So this time you're just going to take a deep breath in and then exhale slowly. Raise your left hand once you can't, or once you've run out of breath, okay? Go ahead and open and pinch your nose again. And then take a deep breath in. Okay, open. So the difference between the collapse and uh, the baseline is a determinant of how much uh, the person's airway would collapse at night. In this case, there's very little uh, difference there as you go down the throat. Um, uh, you, you can see that there is some separation over here in the oral cavity, base of the tongue. And uh, so this is where we would look to take a bite registration that then um, approximated the daytime volume so that we could be sure the person would be able to sleep at nighttime and continue to breathe without issue. Impressions are no longer necessary with uh, 3D scanning, so we have the ability to, to um, be able to spin around, orient the teeth for the production of appliances and um, soft tissue. Uh, so the technology has really turned things around for us, um, being able to get things to uh, be more exacting, uh, less distortion, and certainly a lot easier for the patient. So as you can see, this is left ex expiration and left inspiration. Right is the same, inspiration, expiration. So you'll see red lines and then yellow and then different colors, shades of green. And basically, you'd love to have this be as high and as low as is possible. The closer it is to the red, some of our patients, and you can see this person has a very good nasal airflow. Some of our patients are near flat lines. And this helps the ENT surgeon to know whether or not um, surgery has been completed or whether or not there is additional um, um, things that may be needed to improve nasal breathing.
In, in helping patients who have sleep disordered breathing, uh, the original diagnosis is made by a board certified sleep physician using either a PSG, a polysomnography, an intended study, or a home sleep test. Um, these are examples of various home sleep tests that we use to be able to determine whether our treatment is successful or whether we need, need to make changes until we have success. Um, important to know, very difficult for the patient to be able to perceive because they're asleep. And bite. So the technology of uh, understanding um, the occlusion and how we're able to factor that in uh, to the patient's symptoms uh, is uh, best captured by uh, this digital technique uh, of, of finding exactly the distribution of forces um, and the timing of forces and occlusion. And this is called the tech scan. So by simply uh, replaying the movie, we can discern which teeth hit first, where the prematurities are, where the force vectors go, force vectors, excuse me, and whether that's uh, AP or lateral and the percentages and timing of occlusion so that we best uh, adjust properly. Well, I hope you enjoyed our tour and um, a little better understanding of the equipment that's necessary to be able to handle these very difficult cases. Um, may I also say that our office is the only uh, AADSM certified office uh, in San Diego to be able to deliver care for sleep breathing disordered patients.
Cold laser light therapy is one of the non-invasive treatments we provide our patients at TMJ and Sleep Therapy Center of San Diego. The device transfers the energy of a special light to the area of the body being treated, which increases blood flow, provides more oxygen and nutrients to enhance pain relief and healing. Hello, hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Olmos, and I'd like to talk about uh, sleep-related breathing disorders and what that actually means. So I think the first thing is to talk about exactly what is proper breathing. And uh, so I have a little uh, demonstration model here to show us um, what is proper breathing. Well, proper breathing is, is nasal breathing. So air should um, enter through the nasal valve. Um, be spun around through the turbinates. You have superior, middle, inferior turbinates. And so the air is moistened, filtered, and warmed uh, before it is brought into the airway, okay? And so this is your immune system. Um, as air is being drawn through, it takes, uh, it's like a suction effect that draws um, uh, the gases out of the sinuses called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is very important because it's um, antimicrobial, so it kills bacteria, viruses, and fungus. And so every nasal breath is bringing this gas into our lungs and, and protecting us against things like COVID, which um, there's papers that are showing that nitric oxide is very effective in, in, uh, in protecting us from catching this virus. Um, so this now gets into your lungs and the gas now permeates out into your bloodstream and causes the vessels to dilate. And this then lowers your blood pressure. So nasal breathing helps lower blood pressure. Now, if the nose is blocked at any point, then we have to open our mouth to breathe. This is abnormal. The nose is the organ for breathing. Mouth is the organ for structure for eating. And so where these two come together is right here uh, in what we call the velopharynx or the soft palate area. And so this is the most narrow part of the airway. And um, if the nose is obstructed and the mouth now has to open to breathe, then it causes all sorts of muscular issues and disturbances. And so there's a bit of, of uh, structure and a bit of neurology to the people that have breathing disorders. And what that means is, is that uh, people that have apnea, they breathe just fine in the daytime. I have apnea, I can breathe right now as I talk to you. It's, it's just that when I become unconscious is where the muscles in my airway then relax and collapse. And so therefore sometimes uh, position makes a difference. So in the supine or uh, laying on your back, as the jaw then falls back with gravity in the tongue, that then it can be obstructed right here uh, in the oropharynx. And so then there are situations where we have narrowing so that the air going through is now uh, narrowly obstructed, but not completely obstructed. So that would be situations like snoring, where you have vibration from narrow tissue. Now, snoring has been found to produce cardiovascular disease um, and, and uh, is, a, is a very big factor in producing what's called oxidative stress, which is the mechanism for causing inflammation and breakdown of our cardiovascular system. Um, so snoring is just not innocuous. It's just not funny or silly or a nuisance. It, it, is, it is actually uh, harmful to um, your whole body function. Um, then you get uh, another stage of, of uh, collapse where you have something where you have a narrowing, uh, not complete obstruction, but you have so much resistance that trying to breathe wakes you up. 
And so that's called upper airway resistance syndrome. And that would be narrowing in, in this area here. Um, and, and then the next degree of, of uh, breathing disorder would be uh, uh, apnea. Now, if it's obstructive apnea, that's where the tongue and the jaw fall back and against the palate here, and, and the soft palate then, and all of these structures block the airway. And that's where no air comes through, and that's called apnea. Or there's so little air coming through that the oxygen in your blood drops about 3%, and we call, or 3 or 4%, depending on which um, uh, evaluation system you use, and that's called hypoxia. So we add up the number of times you stop breathing or suffocate apneas, and the number of times you, your blood oxygen level drops 3 or 4% from normal. At, at, at sea level, it should be about 99%. So if you're dropping below 95%, that's a, a big issue. And every time you do, we count those up. If the combination of those is greater than five per hour, then you need treatment for this problem. And that's either positive pressure that forces air, like a CPAP device that forces air into your lungs, um, or oral appliances or combination therapies that are necessary in order to keep the airway open. I personally use an oral appliance to treat my apnea, um, and I've had some nasal surgery to correct the problems and obstructions there. Um, so that I can breathe, but all four points must be open to be able to breathe and sleep comfortably. Nasal valve, nasopharynx, uh, the uh, velopharynx, and the oropharynx. So all four of these points have to be open all night long for you to be able to sleep comfortably well and, and, and wake up with the energy uh, and um, the, your, your ideal uh, health and, and memory because these, these things worsen during um, different stages of sleep. The first four hours of sleep are, are your restful sleep, your body sleep, your non-REM um, uh, sleep. And this is where the deepest sleep, delta wave sleep, is where you produce growth hormone and heal yourself. But as sleep goes on, it becomes more REM, rapid eye movement. And that's where you're basically paralyzed um, as your mind is, is, is actually um, more activated. And this is where you consolidate your memory and your thoughts. However, because your body's paralyzed, then the muscles of your, of your airway, they become more lax. And so if you're waking up um, anywhere uh, you know, throughout the night, usually after four hours of sleep, um, you may have one of these um, sleep breathing conditions and it should be investigated, especially if you're not waking up rested. So I always ask patients if, three questions. Can you get to sleep? If you have insomnia, primary insomnia, you can't get to sleep, 50% of that is, is um, usually related to pain, chronic pain conditions. The other parts are respiratory. In other words, your brain doesn't want you to go to sleep if it knows you're gonna suffocate when you're asleep. So it's a, it's a protection for a lot of people. And then there's the people that can get to sleep, but then they wake up throughout the night. And that's what I was just describing about when in sleep that you wake up. And then there's the people who can stay asleep, they get to sleep, they can stay asleep, but when they wake up, they're fatigued. And those are usually nasally obstructed people that have that chronic daytime fatigue. So we can separate these and kind of figure out exactly what we need to do so you wake up feeling good. And that's really um, the key, is you want to be able to wake up rested, start your day, and start it on, on a good note. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is Steve Morales from the TMJ and Sleep Therapy Centers.
Dr. Stephen Almos uh, from the TMJ and Sleep Therapy Centers. Uh, just wanted to give an update on what is uh, snoring. Nothing in your body should make noises if it's functioning properly. And breathing is one of them. So uh, proper breathing is through your nose. Sometimes people's noses are a little collapsed right in this area here called nasal valve collapse. And sometimes it blocks entry of air into the body. You need your nose. Your nose is important because it filters, moistens, and warms air before it brings it into your body. And basically, it's your immune system. It mixes with a gas in your cheeks called nitric oxide, which is antimicrobial. So every nasal breath coming into your lungs prevents against respiratory infection and uh, very important for this uh, flu season. So uh, we need to keep the nose working and air should come through. And this narrow part here where your soft palate is, um, very often is the area where the tongue and this area are collapsed. And this is where mostly your um, snoring comes from. So as this narrows down, then the air going through makes uh, a sound, like a whistle, okay? And uh, so as it narrows, that's just telling you that there is a compromise in breathing. What snoring has been found to do is um, uh, be able to cause vibration in your carotid artery and makes more plaque. It, it's a, pre, uh, a precursor to stroke and other cardiovascular problems, as is obstructive sleep apnea. That's where you absolutely stop breathing. So just because you don't make noise doesn't mean that you don't have a problem because not breathing uh, sounds like this. So at least snoring means air's going through. And of course, um, then if you have awakenings, if you have to get up to go to the bathroom, if you're fatigued, these are all symptoms of sleep disorder breathing. You have high blood pressure, cardiovascular problems. So if you have any of these issues and you do have snoring, you should really get that checked out.
Make a tight lip seal around that and plug your nose with your left hand. Now you're going to take a deep breath in when I tell you to, and then normal breaths after that. Ready? Go ahead. Okay. So, this is a pharyngometer, and its purpose is to measure airway volume uh, in the oral pharyngeal. Um, so this is the baseline. This is a person's regular breathing. And for people with uh, sleep breathing disorders, there is a collapse of that pharyngeal airway. So now we're going to measure her collapse. So this time you're just going to take a deep breath in and then exhale slowly. Raise your left hand once you can't, or once you've run out of breath. Okay, go ahead and open. And pinch your nose again. And then take a deep breath in. So the difference between the collapse and uh, the baseline is a determinant of how much uh, the person's airway would collapse at night. In this case, there's very little uh, difference there as you go down the throat. Um, uh, you, you can see that there is some separation over here in the oral cavity, base of tongue. And uh, so this is where we would look to take a bite registration that then um, approximated the daytime volume so that we could be sure the person would be able to sleep at night time and continue to breathe without issue.
Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Olmos, and today I'd like to talk about chronic headaches. Chronic headaches um, uh, it can be of many different uh, origins, um, and I thought I'd go over just a few of them uh, for you today. Um, so, what makes your head hurt? Well, there, the nerve endings um, uh, around your brain um, uh, are around the blood vessels. Um, there's layers that protect your brain against your skull. Um, and so that's called the pia layer. So it's, um, uh, it, it, excuse me, it's called the pad. And the first is the pia layer, um, and uh, that's the vascular portion, um, and that's the area of where the blood vessels are, and, and those are the ones that have the nerve endings around them. Um, the brain itself is not innervated. I don't know if you've ever seen um, uh, shows uh, maybe um, uh, on TV, uh, in the movies where they're doing brain surgery and they're probing the person's brain while they're having a conversation about what they're feeling. It's because the, the, the brain itself isn't innervated, but the um, lining around the brain, so this pad layer, pia, arachnoid, and dura layer, is what cushions the brain and protects it against injury. However, sometimes blood vessels can swell, um, like represented here, and um, as they swell, then they push against these nerve endings that make your brain hurt. So that would be a vascular or um, uh, type uh, headache, and um, a good example would be a migraine. Okay, so that's where you have the nerve endings that are uh, hypersensitized by different stimulus. Um, could be problems um, like in your jaw joint, inflammation from that, inflammation from your nose. Uh, both of these things now um, excite the nerve endings and around your brain, and so then you're very susceptible. So people with these kinds of problems are going to have systemic issues, so inflammation generally throughout their body. There are headaches that come from your neck. You can have injuries to your spine. Um, those situations can be the result of trauma, maybe a motor vehicle accident, um, you know, whiplash, this sort of thing. Um, you get tearing of the ligaments, so the vertebrae are displaced, pinching nerves, and that then radiate to the back of your head. Uh, and um, these nerves here that come out of the back of your head um, originate from uh, C2 and C3 um, in, uh, uh, in your spine. And so these are, these are cervical nerves. And so then if you had injury here, that could give you pain um, at the base of the skull. And so real, um, and then understanding that if you had injury to, to your um, your spine, that you can see that your airway, which is a muscular tube, is connected to your spine. So if these vertebrae are out of place, it could affect how you breathe. And if you're not breathing properly, that's another mechanism for giving you headaches. So chronic inflammatory problems of the nose, um, sinusitis, these kinds of things, they all cause inflammation and mouth breathing that result in headache as well. So some headaches are vascular, some are mechanical like we're speaking of, and some are musculoskeletal, you know, clenching and this sort of thing from aberrant function or chronic pain. So there's lots of uh, different origins of, of chronic headaches. And then that's why they have to be triaged. We have to separate them. We have to decide, well, how, how much of the head pain is this or that? And one of the first things that we want to do when we talk about headaches is what uh, time of day do you have the headache? If, um, if you wake up, great. Uh, with no issues, but have headaches as the day goes on. Well, very often those are postural headaches, and the head's probably um, displaced from being upright. And the strain and compression of of the head on your neck or low back can generate those problems. So those are usually more postural problems. In other words, they're more musculoskeletal. Okay, whereas headaches that you have when you wake up in the morning. Well, those can be, um, as I say, from breathing problems. Um, you can be hypoxic, not enough oxygen and, to the brain. And, um, uh, or, you know, it could be um, uh, muscle problems from clenching or mouth breathing with the fatigue. When you mouth breathe, it's very abnormal because, see, you should be breathing through your nose and your mouth should be closed when you sleep. But if your nose gets obstructed, you have to open your mouth. Well, these muscles that close your mouth get 
tired. And after a while, they have to contract in order to relieve themselves. And that constant contraction, opening, breathing, contraction back and forth, usually will present with a person having a uh, tension headache. So headaches are categorized into two major categories. Um, um, there's many, many more, but, but essentially to keep it simple is you either have a secondary headache, which means you have a headache, the result of some kind of um, a pathology in your brain. Maybe there's a tumor, there's bleeding, maybe there's an injury from a trauma. Um, and, and, um, but then most of the headaches people get are what's called primary. And now those are more of the things I was just describing. And so as we'll go through, we'll identify the differences between those primary headaches. So that means that if they took an x-ray of your brain, it would look normal, but you still have these headaches. And that's why I was speaking to some of them are respiratory, some of them are functional problems, uh, muscular problems. These are all um, have to be taken into account and also systemically inflamed. Even infections can cause headaches. So. That's why they have to be triaged. And um, so we need a comprehensive way to go about triaging those. And that's what we do in our TMJ and sleep therapy centers. Thank you.
So I found Dr. Olmos, I think it's about four years ago now. Initially came here for TMJ pain, very bad pain in my jaw, affecting me all day, every day. I actually had braces on at the time uh, from my orthodontist at the time back then. Unfortunately, they weren't doing anything to address my bite. And at that time, I didn't know that was the issue causing all my pain. So he, we waited until I got those braces off, came in, got a new set slapped on in here. And a doctor almost started adjusting my bite. And almost immediately when he started shifting my teeth where they were supposed to be, not just making them pretty, but making them function how they're supposed to be, the pain started decreasing. And over the course of, I think my treatment total was about a year with the braces on, my bite completely changed. The pain subsided easily 95%. It went from killing me every day to, I mean, it's, I, I don't even notice it, you know, not even at all. My, my quality of life has improved tenfold. And that's what I came here for. Well worth it. Great staff, great doctors, always nice to me, always courteous, and the best treatment I've ever had, hands down. Welcome to the TMJ and Sleep Therapy Center. And uh, my name is Linda Gillerin, and I want to tell you how much I've enjoyed working with Dr. Olmos and Dr. Smith, and how much I've learned. Um, maybe an acronym, I need an acronym for exercise, for diet, and for sleep that have really helped me. I've certainly changed a lot of my habits, which hasn't been easy, but so rewarding. I feel so much younger, have so much less stress, so much less pain. I'm so grateful for having discovered TMJ Sleep Therapy Center. I hope you enjoyed as much as I have. My name is Jonathan Stein. I'm 71 years old. I've been dealing with TMJ one way or another since I was a teenager. I probably went to about a half a dozen people who claimed that they could help me, but they never really were able to solve the pain problem in my jaw over here. Finally, I found Dr. Olmost actually through a friend of mine in New York City, and even though I was not his easiest patient, I certainly have had a good outcome. My pain is significantly almost totally gone. I don't wear a daytime appliance anymore. And the only thing that I'm left with is the shift of the jaw and having to work on articulation a bit more. But I'm very happy. And his method of treatment certainly worked for me. Yeah, I'm Vicky Del Campo. Um, I had my jaw pain for a year. And then I researched on Dr. Olmos. And I started my treatment with him in February, and it's been like 12 weeks, and I really had a very good experience with his treatment. And all the employees here, especially the technicians, are very accommodating and very knowledgeable. And um, at this time, my pain had been better, had subsided, and I'm to like say 85 to 90 percent uh, uh, with my pain scale and I'm very thankful for I found Dr. Olmos because I've you know I've been to a, a different one and it did help me so this is a very outstanding experience that I have and I will continue and be compliant whatever his instructions for me. My name is Mary Putnam, and I came to the TMJ Center because I had a change in my bite. My teeth, my upper teeth in the front didn't close down, so it made it really hard to eat certain foods. I was referred here by my orthodontist, and I wish more dentists and orthodontists knew about what they do at the TMJ Center in coming here. I found out that I actually have a sleep breathing disorder which I would have never guessed and I would have never found out about if I didn't come here. And so I'm very grateful. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to Dr. Almos and his incredible staff for helping me to heal and get well. I came here um, after being sick for many months and had been to 
um, numerous doctors and specialists who weren't able to help me with um, terrible migraines and vertigo. I was basically disabled when I came here. I couldn't drive, I could work very little, um, and I was just miserable. So um, anyway, I saw Dr. Almos and he did this thorough exam um, and put me on this plan to, to back to my health. And so I followed it very faithfully and um, I have my health back. 